Hello everyone, I am Sacred and thank you for joining me in Hearts of Iron 4. Who we preside in the spotlight of the mod called 1632, the Ring of Fire Early Alpha. So yes, this mod teleports you back to the year 1632, but this mod is far away from being complete, but it's at least playable. Let's take a look into it. So 1632, the Ring of Fire brings the world of Eric Flint's 1632 series to Hearts of Iron 4. Play an alternative story set in the middle of the Thirty Years' War, where a town from the US in the year 2000 has been transported to Germany in 1631. Play as the times to stranded Americans and find allies to survive the war raging around you, or play another country and see what advantage technology from the future can bring you in this turbulent time. Many thanks to Idran here and the rest of the Converter Project team. Their tools let me convert my earlier work for EU4 to Arts of 4 with minimal hassle. There's a page and it's currently an early alpha. Expect to find bugs and oddities. So, well, we have three pictures. This is the, well, a picture of the cover. Then this is how Europe looks like. And this is uh, how the Holy Roman Empire looks like. So really divided up. And there are some custom made provinces from, I think it has been uh, taken over from Europa and as LS4. So that's quite nice. But uh, I have to unfortunately disappoint you. This mod is, well, playable, but not really playable. If you know what I mean, you can play it, but don't expect it to make any sense. So let's see. Out of Iron 4, the game is loading. There we have a nice comment of Georgi Zhukov, a Russian general. Well, let's see it then. All right. Loading graphics. So, uh, well, you can. Expect already that the Ottomans are the strongest nation in the game? You may think. You may think, but uh, we're gonna take a look why this is not certainly the case. Let's see, single player, new game. We have one scenario, the Ring of Fire. A supernatural event has brought West Virginia, Marmington from the year 2000 to Central Germany in the year 1631. The arrival of these time-displaced Americans, along with their knowledge and technology, has changed the course of history. The wars of religion have been going ongoing for 15 years, and the recent entry of Sweden has invigorated the Protestants. Into the squadron come an unlikely set of folk who may just end up the entire system. Well, we are following measures. We have the new United States, but they kind of don't exist because uh, the USA is currently still New England, so um, they are yet to be implemented. Then we have, let's go back to the menu, we have... Uh, the we have Sweden as a major, Austria, France, the Ottomans, Poland, Lithuania, and Spain. They are all absolutist except the USA. The USA is democratic. The nations of the world, great and small, are not all content to hold their breath awaiting the outbreak of another global conflict. From major powers on the brink of civil war to many nations fought and transformed by the Great War. Okay, that's a wrong history. You see, the Ottoman Empire is a really huge nation, but let's take a look why exactly you can't consider the Ottomans to be strong. You'll see that. Yeah, the Great Ottoman Empire has does only have six divisions, and on top of that, they only have four factories. Yes, they have four factories. They don't have a single military one. They have one naval and three civilian. Well, at least you could argue that they start with a 43 million core population, and they have some vassals, some subjects naming Moldavia, Transylvania, and Wallachia. But I really like it, to be honest, that uh, they are like these subjects and that the provinces look really different as well. That's just awesome. I think they're the same provinces from U4. That's just amazing, yeah. So the spectator. All right. So, uh, yeah, Wallachia is probably just as strong uh, industrial vice as the Ottomans are. Let's see if we can... They have one factory, one. Let's take a look to the majors. France is another major. Uh, France has two divisions. In total, uh, 80,000, uh, 28 million core population. I think they control some. Okay, they have some claims. So there, you can see the French. Uh, more importantly, the French also have five factories. They have one military and four civilian. Uh, the Spanish, they look really huge. They look insanely huge, but they aren't uh, that strong as you think they are. Well, uh, the Spain, the Spanish only have two factories, oh, they have four factories, they have four factories. Zero military, uh, one naval and three civilian, and only 21,000 units. 
Yeah, so keep in mind, this mod is really, really far away from considering itself uh, being playable. Uh, the Spanish Netherlands, New Spain and Spanish Peru are all dominions of Spain. Yeah, they are all dominions of Spain. So, if you want to make some uh, gains in the new world, then uh, conquering Spain would be the, well, best fit for you. New Spain has one factory and Spanish Peru has just uh, one factory as well. So, yeah. If you conquer Spain, the rest will fall as well. Well, the English are also uh, one of the stronger. I say stronger because they have seven factories. Zero military, two naval and five civilian. Well, the English, man, they have, let's see. They have Scotland and New England both as a dominion. So you could integrate Scotland, but you can't like form a, a Great Britain because you don't have that option here. Because all of the nations just have the generic focus trees. Actually, you can go like Absolutist and Radicalist, but that's a thing I'm gonna take a look on later. Yeah. Then we have Poland, Lithuania with six factories, one military, five naval, and five civilian, I mean, and just an army of 12,000. Uh, Prussia is their subject. The poor Prussians. Then we have Russia as their own nation, as one of as the strongest country, because they have nine factories. They have two military and seven civilian. Once. That's why I call them the strongest. Although they don't control the Far East, so yeah, Russia isn't that big, how it was. Like, because it's uh, of history, they didn't colonize it yet by that time. And well, weirdly, I can tell you I found a bug. I found a bug. China is insanely strong. I'm not sure if that was intended it to be, but China is just insanely strong. They have 96 factories, they have like way more than everyone else combined. So if you want to play as an OP nation, if you want to play as the strongest nation in the game, then play as China. We have 96, 90 and 6 whooping factories. The Mugars have 25, so the Mugars are really strong as well, so quite hard to conquer. The Mugars have 25 factories. Other than that, these minor nations, they aren't really strong at all. They are quite weak, per se. But, hey, but you could like pick a nation and then like, do your own colonialization. Like Japan has, for example, just eight factories. Uh, keep in mind that this mod is far away from being complete. Really, really far away from being complete there. So you really need to take that in mind. And Sweden has three, three factories. Yeah. I don't know why they have also that so little factories, to be honest. So I don't know. How you see the provinces, they are very different as well. They're very, very different. They, well, are like the provinces of U4, I mean, they are way too huge, U4 has like more provinces than one, so that's quite weird, yeah, also the slots is just like one, because it's all just, you, you don't have uh, industrialized, industrialized regions here, which actually makes sense, yeah, all right, well, and, then, and then we have Austria with just two factories, so you can see that all of the nations here are really, really weak, weak, and faction-wise, we have the Catholic Leech and the Protestant Union, uh, these two major factions, the Catholic Leech and the Protestant Union. So you can uh, well go ahead and avoid a really, really long war against the other countries. The Protestant Union, well, the thing is you just start off with like one division and that's it. So, yeah, that's not really uh, beneficial for you, to say the least. But hey, all right. Well, uh, for example, the portraits are no way of being complete. But let's take a look to the national focus. So we get uh, the generic focus tree here, but our addition is that we can actually become a absolutist or radicalist. Uh, radicalists, like, or absolutists. Absolutists, yeah. Absolutists, and then that's it. Yeah, or you could go, I think, fascist, you can actually go fascist. You can become neutral, absolutist, communist even. Well, you can't become communist, you can't become fascist, you can't become the democratic. Yeah. I think that's if you. Let's uh, just test out. If you like want to become a communist, we get no event here, yeah, so you can't become really communist. The only faction you can become is actually absolutist, I think. Yeah. So, yes, you are not supposed to switch ideologies here to say the least. Well. That's about this mod. Like, this mod is like the world in 1631. In 1631, like, but in the uh, Hearts of Iron 4. 
saying that technology wise you can research it so it has been like rescaled from 1613 to 1641 you can do everything, it's all really scaled, but do not play with any mods who alter the technologies or anything like that. But it's still playable in this instance. And I'm not sure, to be honest, if the AI is like supposed to produce troops. So I'd say let's go ahead and uh, play as a counter here. Yeah. Let's play as a counter, I'd say. Uh, please also drop a comment down below, uh, like which counter you would prefer me to play. Like, uh, let's see, which counter should I pick now for a swift playthrough? Let's pick Brandenburg. I'm sure most of you would like it. Let's play on regular. Let's, I mean, this picking this doesn't make any sense. So let's just play on regular as Brandenburg. Brandenburg. Yeah, but currently uh, we really cannot do that much. So let's get the political efforts. And then we just have to resource. First. Let's get the basic equipment ongoing and... Well, we already have artillery skill production. Okay, well, we just have one uh, infantry brigade, that's it. So we need more of them. We have some brigades and there are some divisions. They are different. We have also a, a completely separate cavalry division. Let's see, should I... The suppression is... This organization 60... 70. Well, I may just produce all the cavalry units because why not? So they are... Well, yeah. They require, the division requires uh, 1080, okay. Well, but you can also like get uh, mountaineers and motorized equipments and so forth. So let's see, here we have the Catholic League. So I could actually declare war on some countries, let's see. Let's get rid of the countries who aren't in any league yet, but they all start off with at least one uh, division, so... Um, Let's see, if I'll declare war on Mecklenburg, on Mecklenburg, where they just have one factory, that's really not much, and I don't think the AI will go for the industrial effort, so there's actually no point in capturing them unless you want one extra factory, that's it. For example, we aren't able to build anything out, we can only produce uh, 6.8 weapons per day, and that's it. I would suggest that we'll get some uh, cavalry brigades up and training in Brandenburg. The problem is we just have a core population of 1.7 million, so yeah, you have some problems uh, conquering the world as a Brandenburg. I, I should have uh, taken that into consideration before, but I didn't, so yeah. Well, you could also play as the French, the French would be a stronger pick to play as. Yeah, the French. Should I actually play as the French or as the English? I mean, I'm tempting too. Uh, since uh, you have the insane problem with uh, the core population as Brandenburg, I think actually, Austria has so many core states. Look at that. Austria. Well, yeah, let's firstly go to spectator mode. Let's see. Austria has a core population of uh, 5 million. France has uh, 28 million. England has uh, 20 million. Well, uh, I said already that none of the countries actually start off with a navy, so that's not to your advantage. Yeah, it isn't. Well, I think uh, the Ottoman Empire is uh, quite a strong pick as well, with a 44 million uh, population there. Yeah, 44 million. Or Brandenburg with just the 1.7 million, but you know what, let's just keep playing as Brandenburg for this uh, spotlight here. So yeah, just keep playing as Brandenburg, I'll go for the collectivist. Actually, the industrial effort, just to get some extra factories there, that's really... Uh, uh, what's that? Um, okay, I need to increase the world tension in order to also get some boosts there. I guess I can enact limited conscription, yeah, that's it. I'm maybe able to pop it like Poland, so I can use actually their manpower, for example, that are plans which you can do. I'm getting the calorie brigades up, let's actually get them all deployed. There we go, and then train them, furthermore, train them. Alright, so uh, don't forget that you are a member of the Protestant Union, the Protestant Union, and you are supposed to go to war with the Catholic League, I think, yes you are. So let's uh, get our army a little bit better developed, and after that I would suppose it's time to rage war, time for warfare. Yeah. Alright, our construction, I don't need that, let's get any weapons one, so we get at least somewhat decently upgraded weapons. 
Uh, or I really have no, really no idea whom to take here. Now let's just perhaps get the army of... Let's get... Maybe... Uh, I've Maybe infantry equipment designer. And then armed efforts. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. I'm doing quite a well, challenge as Brad Burke with just 1.7 million core population and without... Well, I have some core states, I see. I have Pomerania as a core state, but that's it. I just have... Uh, parts of Pomerania as a core state. Yeah, I have tell you none, no other core states. Yeah. yeah, Austria has many core states, so you could easily play as Austria without having to fear your low, well, manpower issue, I'll call it. The AI is never going for extra factors. Well, at least uh, Zaxxon Weimar is going for the construction effort too, so that's at least something. I think it's time to declare war on the Protestant Union first. I think my five divisions should be enough. Austrians have two, they have two as well. Alright, they have zero, they have one. Yeah. Let's maybe get a bit more, maybe five more. I mean, five more should be perfect. Yeah, let's get five more cavalry brigades trained in Brandenburg. And after that, I think we should be ready. I mean, it may take a long, we need 1.7k uh, weapons for that. Yeah. Do we have our own leader? No, let's get the leader Otto von Oldenburg. Also go for armed FR2 and 3, so we get extra factories there. We need to get them for weapons. Oh, it's 9.3, 9.4. Alright, awesome. Going up slowly but steadily, we'll be at war. Well, this, uh, the Cologne has only one factory, alright. I think let's like annex Silesia for sure. Silesia for sure, yeah, annex them. And then, well, should I have power Austria? Yeah, that's power Austria. So we can use their manpower. But that's, of course, in case I win the war. If I don't, then so you can't do that. They are fully trained, great. Yeah, they still need to get developed, so that's taking some time. At least we got new weapons, one. Let me uh, take care of this. Alright. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now, how is it still... Alright. Excuse me for this place, but no, uh, yeah. No interruptions. Okay, Brandenburg. Uh, well, with that, let's get them ready against these Salesians and the uh, Catholic League in general. I want to conquer all of the provinces. Okay, I can't wait. I'm gonna declare war right now. Let's get the other one and start justifying war. Go conquer Österreich. There you go. Yes, we'll aim directly to the Austrians. To the Holy Roman Emperor. Austria was, don't forget the Holy Roman Emperor. Well, Austria is going to be our puppets, our vassal. We're gonna take care of that quite smoothly. Well, Poland is only has 10 to 12 civilian factories, so they are a uh, rising power while we only have one. But that shouldn't be a problem since we are gonna get even more right now. Declare war, then look to the enemies. Or Spain as well, but I don't get called. Or we have to get rid of Spain as well. How can I please uh, capture the Spanish? That's not possible. Is it. Oh no. Well, then it's just. Well, I mean, we can occupy Austria. Fine, but how we can. How I, I, I would need to like march through France to get rid of the Spanish, so that's not really good. No. Well, yeah, Spain shouldn't be in the faction. Well, France should be, so like we could balance it out, but France is not. France is on their own as well, so yeah. <laughs> okay, that's not so good as I thought. But still, I want to declare the war, declare war, call allies. Okay, now a huge war just emerged. Okay, yes. 67,000 against 136,000. We are fighting Spain as well. And are you pushing well? Well, I hope so. Okay, I may uh, need them right now. Deploy these units. What? My troops are already encircled. Okay, that, that's not going so good as I thought it would. Well, at least they are linked up with 
each other. They should. All right, let's you do some manual management then, some manual management. Like, can we bypass their lines? Um, I go into here, try to encircle them, maybe? Yes. Amazing, we are encircling the units. Awesome. Okay, they are now firmly entrenched. And three divisions are cut out of supply. Great. Let's get more weapons. And, yeah, we don't need it anymore. We are waging wars on our own. Now we can go for the construction efforts. I have 100,000 units against 150,000. Let's see, the war is... Well, we can uh, make Cologne surrender, so let's actually detach this one brigade. They have no units whatsoever, do they? They have one. I'm gonna get rid of them whatsoever, quite fast, as soon as possible. They are cut off supply, so let's get rid of them. There we go, encircling them. That's going not too bad. I mean, it's a great, great war, so keep that in mind. It will take a long time, and it's not that easy as I thought it would be. Fighting the whole Catholic League, actually. Yeah. This color is going to surrender right now. That's good for us, I think. Um, so, brute machine tools. Okay, why doesn't Cologne surrender? Cologne, you want to surrender, maybe? Come on, Cologne. I can't see why Cologne... Sh oh, okay, oh, they are there. Oh, they are stuck there. Uh, Alright, that's why they don't surrender that easily. Smart Cologne. And there they have all of their factories, like, stuck and hidden. Uh, okay. And now I can just march through with this one unit. So let's capture Prague, for example. Prague and Brno, so they will finally surrender the Bohemians, so we get their factories. There we go. They surrendered, but I get no surrender, no, no, no notifications whatsoever. That's not so good. I want to see if I surrender, and then so, so, Silesia should surrender as well. Alright, come on. Oh! Look, look to that. Yeah, we are winning this war. And then you can just like march through to Vienna and Sopron. I think if Austria surrenders, all of them may surrender because Austria is the only major. Well, look to that. If that happens, that will be amazing. So we can capture like all of these states like on our own. Well, we captured Vienna already. Let's go to Ljubljana. And the Austrian army is deciding not to do anything there, alright, so let's, if they want to do nothing, just fine. We captured Ljubljana, let's capture Trent. But they captured, I think they want to capture Vienna back. We're just marching through the Austrian land, just they're smoothly marching through, and they are already 80% towards capitulation. Well, winning the war against such a huge nation as Austria is quite easy, I thought it would be a bit, bit harder. Right, maybe we have to capture Trieste as well. Well, the, it's like pure baller gore. Oh, they recaptured Vienna, that's why. Smart Austrians, but not for long. It will be ours. Vienna is worth here 13 victory points, so Vienna has to be recaptured at all costs. Well, they are moving out. All right, if they want to leave, it's just fine. Now we capture the Graz. Let's keep them occupied there and capture Vienna. There we go. Austria still doesn't want to surrender. As soon they will, I promise. Soon. They sure surrender at once. Let's build one more civilian factory in Brandenburg. Come on. There we go. How I thought the war is over. And I can... Well, I cannot make any demands against, for example, Spain. Because they are untouched, so we can't make any demands of them. Yeah, sadly, sadly. I should have, for example... Yeah, just... Uh, I couldn't. So, let's see. Saxony got a good amount of points. What I want to do is first to Austria. Satellite, Slovenia, Great West, Croatia, Croatia, and Slovenia, and then Puppet Austria. Austria. Well, these states, they were German, so let's get them for our rule, and then I'll puppet the rest of Austria. There we go. I'll mount on these countries. Silesia will be a part, an entire part of our country, even the Silesian Moravia, I don't care. Alright. Well, Saxony gave me all, all of the points, so well, thank you, Saxony. Then I'll uh, get 
Clown, yep, clown. Okay, I can't sell it. Let's end the turn. Pass. Okay, they don't want to make any demands, so that's nice. Just pass. Cologne. We'll be part of Brandenburg, Franconia, and Würzburg as well. Completely annexed Mainz as well. Uh, Bayern as well, because if you want to form Germany, there we go. Uh, well, Bohemia and Hungary. Hungary will be puppeted. Actually, Slovakia first. We have to pass sometimes. Pass. Southern Slovakia and then Hungary or what's left of it. Hungarians and then Bohemian Moravia. All right, so this war was a great success. So we aren't getting any events. I, I know why we aren't getting events because I uh, took it from the uh, spectator to the first person. Well, this was really, really easy, to be honest. Insanely easy. Like if I would just reload that, it's, we would get many events at once. I think at least. Like the notifications as well. Let's maybe go back to the menu. But this one was a great success. Yeah. I think we are. Yeah, we have Austria as our puppets. Because you can play as any nation. That really doesn't make a difference. Because uh, this game. This one is really fun. I suggest you trying it out. But it's far away from being complete. Far away from being complete. So yeah. And having Salesian Moralia looks just ugly. Doesn't it? Or fine, I don't have a problem. Our borders look ugly in general, but we have 20 factories. That's a nice gain. Uh, let's also get some artillery, I suppose. At least some there. Some artillery. Right. I have to get some tungsten, no problem. Let's get this from Portugal. And let's get partial mobilization. So, whom should we capture next? Let's see. There are four or nine divisions. We have just nine. Well, Brandenburg has following subjects. Austria, Bohemia, Hungary, Croatia, Slovakia, and Slovenia are all our subjects. Just did this with, with more cavalry brigades. Let's make a whole army of cavalry brigades. So let's get 15 more. We lack the manpower for that though, so I got a different plan. Let's get the Austrian manpower used for that, shall we? Austria, cavalry brigade. Yes, let's train it on Austrian. Soil. Okay, 15. I got 15. Yeah. Alright, so let's get infrastructure efforts after that. Well, the Protestant League, the Catholic League, is kind of disbanded. It's only consisting of Spain and her puppets. That's it. That's just what's left of. That Netherlands. Alright, so the Protestant Union is quite dominant. Let's see. Whom? Sachse Weimar. They're just standing there. Let's just have a war with the Conquer, West Thuringia. And also get Magdeburg out of the world. Yeah. Just our army around there. I don't mind. Just like this. Right. And there's one little country. But it, oh, ah, here we have East Virginia. Ah, ah, there, there. I didn't see them. Oh, well, here I'll be, oh, what? They have a own, oh, uh, I forgot to mention it. Uh, here we have also, we also have East Virginia here, the new United States. Oh, I, I completely forgot them. Well, um, all right. Also, oh, oh, that's my mistake. I completely forgot them. So, yeah. All right, well, um, I'll make a dedicated episode for the new United States, I think, maybe. But they have, uh, like, okay, that's the generic focus. The only thing they have in the settling in, like, they can either welcome refugees in the new American Revolution, but it's really not complete. Or they can conscript refugees, and that's first, like, but... Uh, the new, uh, the forestry of the new United States is really not complete. It's really incomplete, and the problem is their manpower. So I'll not, never mind, I'll not make a separate episode for them. It's not worth it. Yeah. Hey, but yeah, I won't uh, take them out, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, there are some extra regiments now, so let's, uh, after we win this war, let's just take the provinces. Alright, let's save it. Let's save our game. Yeah. Let's actually attack to the United States. Oh, well, I didn't really see them. Yeah. 
I completely didn't see them. Let's see. The new United States. Yeah, they just have 215,000 manpower and they get the militia and the green regiment. So, um, mercenary cavalry. They aren't really that strong, so they don't have really any uh, additional benefic benefit there. They're just a nice, like, addition to the game. Well, I want to thank you all for watching me. Please be sure to check out my other content and let me know what you think about this episode. And I'm Sacred Tele, good day to you all, and see you next time. Goodbye and have a nice time.